Well, good morning and happy thankful Thursday. This is Dana DeCaligon Blanchard from Lafayette, Louisiana, Senior Sales Director and Second Generation Mary Kay, daughter of Senior National Sales Director Emeritus Wilda DeCaligon. I'm so happy to be sitting in for our amazing National Sales Director friend, Kristen Sharp, who is, uh, she's just, She's struggling, living the life on a Mediterranean cruise right now. Let's all feel sorry for her. <laughs> well, our national sales directors are having a great time on their cruise, and um, it is so fun to just watch them and all the fun little things that Mary Kay is giving them and letting them experience on this trip. My mom said she's grieving not being on this trip since she's an emeritus. She's, she's traveling virtually with her friends. Well, have you ever heard that saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same? I've been thinking about that lately in our Mary Kay business. And, you know, we can all agree that we've experienced quite a bit of change in these last several years. But ultimately, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And by that, I mean our Mary Kay business and at its roots, at its core, is always going to be the same way to success and the same skills and components that help to build a solid business. Now, we may execute them all differently, but at its core, the same things need to be done for us to achieve success and be cruising the Mediterranean one of these days on that national trip. My offspring sales director, uh, the amazing Azra Jones, was talking to me recently about the concept of working full circle and how that maybe we as leaders are not teaching that concept quite enough and imparting that to our new consultants, to understand that concept of working our business full circle and what that really means. So if that's a new concept to you, then I'd just love to share with you the thought of, um, of, of what that is, presenting the product and just prospecting to where, hey, here's somebody new who I want to get their opinion of the product. Ultimately, that's what we should be doing is just looking and seeking out to get people's opinion of the product. Now, who doesn't want to give you their opinion? That's a very different thought than when you think, okay, who am I going to sell to? That's an intimidating thought. But when you think, okay, who can I just get their opinion? Then it opens up a world of possibilities to you. So if you just sit down today and make a 30-plus list, as my mom always called it, 30-plus people who you could ask to give you their opinion of the product, then it may just take the reins off of your brain a little bit and let you think of people that you might not normally think of. So I challenge you to do that today on this thankful Thursday, to sit down and just think about who could who could you pamper a little bit, who could you ask for their opinion of the product. And then that person then gets to experience the product and give you their opinion, and she likes it enough to share it with friends, and you turn that into her being a hostess. And when she shares that with friends, then there inevitably is going to be a gathering of people, either virtually or in person, that opens you up to, to new new clientele. And there will be two to three people there who you can share the opportunity with. And sharing the opportunity opens them up to maybe not necessarily being the opportunity for them, but they could be a talent scout for you. And they could turn around and give you some referrals and help you to work this business full circle, developing that person into a customer and getting her on the product and the ultimate goal being for her to be on every single product in the line and you having shared the opportunity with her and then servicing her on a regular basis. You can see how you can build a very strong, deep, wide, solid customer base with a simple concept. And so it all starts with what we talked about at the very beginning, just making that list and booking. My friend Maria Claxton Taylor this morning was reminding me that she does a, a booking blitz with her consultants and they set aside a time, a time to book. A booking a booking time is so important that we have that on our calendars and that we know that every week we're doing something to fill up our books with some time. Where are we going to get those opinions of the product, either virtually or in person? All of these concepts are just the things that built this business from the bottom up, just rock-solid concepts that built our Mary Kay business. And as we think about it, in the months that we're in, in the month of May, those of us with school-age children, I have a rising senior. Oh, my goodness. Um, and so I'm at the tail end of – she's my baby – and I'm at the tail end of those summer times with a kid in school. So we're a few weeks away from the school year being finished. And that 
rises, you know, challenges come up too with our schedules are a little bit different. We might stay up a little later. We might get up a little later. Our days are not quite as consistent as they are during the school year. And so that can mean some challenges to you too for your Mary Kay business if that's your life. If you have the freedom and flexibility to make those choices on a daily basis, then it becomes even more important to have a calendar in place and to really look at where is your Mary Kay business going to fit and how is it going to fit? I heard a director years ago talk about how um, Mary Kay was kind of like a bowl of ice cream. Um, Life is like a bowl of ice cream and Mary Kay was like the chocolate syrup that just drizzled in all the little cracks of her life. And I love that thought that, you know, we can we can have a very full life and still have a very full Mary Kay business by just fitting it in where it needs to fit in. But that takes a lot of planning. Wouldn't you agree with me? I mean, it really takes a lot of planning and being prepared to do that. And our Mary Kay business, you know, gosh, 60 years. Can you even get a get, you know, just like. 60 years strong, that's a lot of women, a lot of lives, a lot of people who have experienced the product. And I I tend to look back, you know, those times in my business when I'm thinking, I need to restart something or I need to, you know, get things going again. I look back to the women that grew this business from the ground up in the early days. We like to call them the pioneers. And a lot of these women I was blessed to grow up knowing, one of which was Helen McBoy. She was my mom's national sales director one of the first two nationals in Mary Kay and she would come to town to work with my mom and and I had the benefit of just kind of sitting in the kitchen table listening to them talk and strategize and think about how mom could grow her Mary Kay business and and my mother went on to become one of the first four that ever achieved a million um the million dollar club and she did it in a year where she had my brother And so doing something like that was, you know, at the time, it was the 1980s, and it was a little different. Um, And to think about how you reach those things and the thought processes those women had, I think it's easy sometimes to think about, oh, they got in on the ground floor, you know, the grass grew under their feet. And some of that, you know, of course, may be true. But I think primarily they had the more difficult task because it was Mary who, Mary what. It was not the brand that it is. 60 years later when people know the iconic pink Cadillac and have a frame of reference for the brand, they really were doing something very different. And I think of Helen McVoy, and I came across this piece of paper lately that I wanted to share with you, and it's Helen McVoy's writing on the law of averages. This was from her newsletter. So I'm going to read it to you, and um, just keep that in mind as you work your business this week and in the coming weeks, full circle, sharing and getting those opinions, and here are Helen McVoy's words on the law of averages. Every day I see the frustration of consultants who do not know about or who will not accept the law of averages. A thorough understanding of the law of averages will make a big difference in your Mary Kay career. Sales trainer Dr. Kenneth McFarlane once said, man as an individual is totally unpredictable, but the masses are a sure thing. He was describing the law of averages. What this means to you is that you can't really predict how a particular guest, hostess, prospective team member is going to respond. However, if you're dealing with enough guests, hostesses, or prospective recruits, they are going to behave in a very predictable manner. This is why in training classes, I suggest you have eight classes on your date book if you want a whole five. You coach the hostess to invite eight to ten guests so she can end up with six. You interview three or four prospects to get one signed agreement. What happens when the consultant does not conduct her business with the law of averages in mind? Usually, she doesn't meet her financial goals because she didn't hold enough classes. Her sales are lower because a smaller number of guests in attendance at her class. She thinks she can't recruit because she's only interviewed two people. In general, here, attitude turns negative because she's not meeting her goals. In discussing this topic with consultants, I am asked, What if all the classes on my date book hold? That is why Mary Kay developed the DuckTail program. Don't get hung up on the fact that the hostess will want only me to do the class. Learn to not only book more than you can plan to hold, but double book. Your best time slots are double booked. Then start recruiting so that you will have someone to dovetail your classes to. In this way, you're making money from the classes you hold, from the dovetail classes you booked, recruiting commissions on merchandise ordered and sold by your recruit 
went, who held the class. This really means that you're going beyond your weekly money goal. Also, you are not frustrating yourself. Try it. The business you save may be your own. Or those precious words from um, National Sales Director Emeritus, Helen McVoy, who was just such a pioneer in our Mary Kay business. So I just want to encourage you today on this thankful Thursday to um, get out there and ask for some opinions and let your business be a product of the law of averages. Have a great day.